Not long ago, I was all over the internet, desperately seeking for answers to why my face looked the way it did. The pressure to look good online had me, a young man, prioritizing my appearance over everything else in my life. This video is your ultimate guide, built on years of experience, with visible results from myself, to actually achieve a leaner face, naturally, without any time-wasting surgeries or stupid myths or other methods that may be recommended online. What's bomb clock, dog? This man will wake up good enough. Give me a good blood clock, dog. First of all, why would you want to lose face fat? There are many reasons why you would want to, but remember, I'm not a doctor. This advice is based on my experience, and first of all, you should feel good about accepting who you are first and not relying on other people's judgment to decide your actions on taking these steps. It should be for you and you only. The main reason why people want to lose face fat is because a leaner face is often considered more attractive or desirable. Here are some examples of celebrities before and after dropping their overall body fat percentage. Men and women are more under pressure now to change their appearance due to changes in societal dynamics, dating markets and social media. With the rise of dating apps, people have more options and higher standards. And with a high demand to change, you get a lot of misinformation spread around. And like anything, due to the more demand in wanting to change someone's appearance, you also get a lot more solutions popping up. So that's how you get myths and ineffective ways to actually achieve the result you want because there's just so much supply of information because of the demand that you just don't know what to follow. For example, take the trend mewing. Um, that's the process in which you stick the tongue to the top of your mouth to define your jawline. But apparently, that's been going around recently as a way to lose your face fat and get a more defined face. When in reality, it's just a, a correct breathing technique and it's nothing more than that. That's why before we move on to the actual process, we'll debunk some common myths about facial fat loss. And I'll share the advice that personally worked for me and will hopefully work for you. The appearance of a chubbier face is usually down to a higher body fat percentage. And body fat percentage determines how much of your weight is made up of fat. Don't confuse body fat percentage with overall weight. You can be a 225 pound man or 100 kilo man and still have a low body, body fat percentage and still be in shape and fit and healthy. That's why the two just don't correlate. So just distinguish between those first. Before you start any steps mentioned in this video, do you actually have a fat face or is it just bloated? Maybe you're younger and your face hasn't fully developed yet, or maybe you just have naturally chubby cheeks due to genetics. Losing body fat may help, but it could be these other factors that may hold you back. This applied to me when I was younger. When I was younger, I didn't necessarily have a fat face. It was just bloated and I was just, because I was younger, I had a more childlike appearance due to chubby cheeks from my genetics and my parents. So when I was criticizing my appearance, it was mostly because I was bloated in the mornings and that pressured me to think that I had a fat face and looking up all these different methods to try and lose fat, fat when all I needed was just time. However, the one myth that you should know is that spot reducing fat is a complete myth. You can't target fat loss in a specific area. You need to drop your overall weight and body fat to notice changes around your whole body. And where you hold and distribute your fat is highly dependent on your gender and your genetics. For example, I hold more fat on my back and my face, and that's just how it is. But I don't hold a lot of fat on my stomach. That's why I typically look leaner year round, but my back isn't as defined. It's just how, just how my genetics are. The places where you hold the most amount of body fat is typically the place where you'll be the last to lose it when you are about to drop weight or your body fat. Right, so for example, if someone drops weight or body fat, some people might notice it dropping from their face first. Some might be able to drop it from the stomach or the hips or whatever but it just it, it varies but to put it simply to see changes in your face you must drop your overall body fat and weight the main way to get a leaner face is to drop your body fat percentage not through doing weird tricks or techniques with trends like looks maxing short-term fixes are often shielded with minimal effect products often shielded online include ice rollers gua sha's and special chewing devices trends online like on tiktok they capitalize on insecurity. That's why they sell the product because there's a demand to lose. There's a demand to lose face fat and there's a demand to look more attractive, but no one's willing to put in the effort. And that's why these short-term fixes get sold and these products don't have any effect at all really. And there's more sustainable, longer-term fixes that actually give you the results that you want. You just have to put in the effort. Now let's get to the core. How do we actually lose body fat? Well, the answer is you need to be in a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is when your body burns more calories than it absorbs. For example, if you burn 2000 calories daily and you eat 2000 calories, you won't gain or lose weight. However, if you burn an extra 500 calories through exercise, 
then you lose 500 calories worth of weight, therefore being in a 500 calorie deficit. Losing body weight is straightforward, but losing body fat is a little bit more complicated and needs a more controlled approach. You want to aim for a small calorie deficit to avoid losing crucial weight, but still lowering your body fat percentage. First of all, ask yourself this question, are you overweight and have a high body fat percentage? Or are you an average or underweight, but have a high body fat percentage? Because what happens next will determine how you approach this. Me personally, I'm I'm still light, but I do carry a lot of body fat percentage. So it would be pointless for me to be in a big deficit because that would mean that I would lose weight rapidly, but I'd also lose body fat percentage. But I don't want to lose actual weight. I want to drop my body fat percentage. So I'd have a smaller deficit. So maybe I'd burn 200 more calories than I'd be absorbing. So I'd be in a 200 calorie deficit. So that way I wouldn't lose a lot of body weight, but I would slowly see my body fat percentage go down. However, if you're overweight and have a high body fat percentage, then a higher calorie deficit will also help you drop weight and also drop body fat percentage. Another term you need to understand is your basic metabolic rate. Your basic metabolic rate is how much calories you burn per day without additional exercise. So this means just walking, walking around casually like day to day, sitting down, sleeping, all calories you burn without any extra effort needed. There are many sites you can use to work this basic metabolic rate out and I'll put a link in the description. But for example, if my basic metabolic rate was 2000 calories, so I burn 2000 calories day to day by doing nothing. To lose weight and be in a deficit, all I'd need to do was to just eat less than 2000 calories. I wouldn't have to do any more exercise. All I'd have to do is just maybe eat 1,800 calories, not do any exercise, and I'd slowly lose weight and body fat percentage. It's that simple. However, if you want better results and quicker results, then I suggest eating above your basic metabolic rate and doing additional exercise to still stay in a deficit, but that still allows you to eat over your BMR and also get the nutrients you want. So for example, my basic metabolic rate or BMR as I'll call it, that could be 2,000 and I could eat maybe 2,500 calories. And then I could do 700 calories of additional exercise on top of that. So 2,000 take away 700 would be 1,800. So then that way I would still be in a deficit. To lose weight, you need to eat less. But to lose significant fat, you need to eat less and move more. Taking a slower weight loss approach for people who are maybe average weight will burn your fat more effectively and avoid other inconsistencies like muscle loss. Understanding deficits, BMR, and the difference between body weight and body fat is crucial. Now let's talk about other long-term methods for a leaner, slimmer look. We eat and breathe daily, so why not do it correctly? A correct breathing technique is found to support facial growth. Mike Mew's orthotrophic process involves an optimal breathing technique where you put your tongue on the palate of your, of your mouth, so like this. And you can see by doing that, it does like get rid of the fat under your chin, kind of, it makes it tighter. But also it that's like a, a short-term thing it does, but the main thing it does is ensure that you have a correct breathing technique. So it allows you to breathe through your nose and it also is found to develop your, your face, your face muscles here. So this gets pushed up your maxilla bone because you're pushing through the roof of your mouth. It gets pushed out and gives you a more defined and less droopier look, I guess, or more sharper look. So that can help in giving the appearance over a long amount of time that you also have a more defined or slimmer face. There are many videos on how to do it correctly, but just search mewing, spelled M-E-W-I-N-G, and you'll find loads of videos on how to do it. But doing this day to day is shown to improve facial aesthetics and overall health. And not only that, but I also found out that I was swallowing food incorrectly. Swallowing food with your cheeks instead of your throat muscles can actually overdevelop your cheeks and give you a more puffy or bloated look due to overactivation of the buccinator muscles. And another long-term thing that you can do is just chew gum more regularly. As this develops the maxilla muscles on the side here, which are the the edges of your jaw which jut out so it can give you a more like square jawline I guess if that's what you're looking for. The type of gum that I prefer to chew is called mastic gum and you can get that from Amazon and it's kind of like a tough gum. Basically it's a, it's a packet of gum crystals like this and you get a handful of them and crush them up and like form it in your mouth and make it into a sort of gum paste and it lasts for ages you just chew on it for ages and it just works the, the muscles on the side of your your jaw here. As you can see, if I can try and get like a demonstration here. 
like when you clench you can kind of see it jutting out a bit but after i chew that i always find that it really pumps up the muscles there and obviously it just works it so it can give you a slightly wider jaw if that's what you're looking for and although a wider jaw doesn't necessarily mean a slimmer face it can improve your facial aesthetics which i'm guessing if you've clicked on this video is what you're looking for now it's all good talking about long-term methods to slim down your face but most of you will want results now or change now as i'm guessing you feel bad about your appearance now hence why you clicked on the video in that case i have you covered i have some short-term fixes that will also work in conjunction with the long-term fixes which will allow you to work towards a bigger goal while also seeing change now, which will motivate you to stick and stay consistent. No, stick and stay consistent with the, the body fat dropping anyway. Here are some tips I recommend to follow if you want to slim down your face temporarily or I guess de-bloat it. If you typically wake up with a dry face in the morning, use a toner and a moisturizer to slim down your face. So I find that using a toner, which is kind of like a water-based solution on my face, tightens my skin and having a moisturizer on as well it just makes my complexion look better and tighter and it just give, just has less of a, a puffy look in the morning. You look more awake and your skin just looks more fresh and healthy. And clearing your acne up in general, if you do have it, can also give you the appearance of a slimmer face due to less inflammation. My second tip is to shower as soon as you wake up. So before you have breakfast, just shower first. And I typically like to start with warm water and then finish with cold. As the warm water allows me to actually clean my skin and my body first as it opens up the pores and then ending with cold water closes the pores and tightens your skin after so it's a it's a good trade-off my third tip is to get outside and get in get in some sort of sunlight as soon as you wake up so after a shower or maybe after you vet just go outside just get some sun on you like whatever that's been maybe it's walking to work or um just just like meditating outside or something um, just getting outside, having sun on your face can really like wake you up. It can kind of open your eyes a bit more and kind of get you out like a groggy kind of bloated kind of look. I also find it helps that if you combine going outside with also exercising, that if you try to work up a sweat in the morning, maybe if you have time to do so, then that can help out sweat out any toxins or salt. And I find that sweating out can also help in giving a temporary deep bloated look. Another tip for the mornings as well is to drink a litre of water as soon as you wake up. Having water helps with obviously hydration but it also helps in getting a slimmer look due to um, as, as you drink water obviously your skin needs water to stay healthy but drinking water keeps your skin tighter and it just helps with loads of things. Obviously, I don't need to say that water is a miracle drink because it is, but it's, it's great. And for my last tip for any short-term de-bloating is to avoid salt and sugar for the rest of the day in excess if possible. Excess salty, sugary or alcoholic food and drink just typically, for me, leads to puffiness in the face and avoiding them can typically mean that your face will just stay more leaner and slimmer throughout the day. As a side note, the type of haircut you have can drastically affect how your face looks. A shorter haircut can kind of help define your features more, whereas a longer haircut can help balance out a higher body fat face as there's more going on on top to, to kind of distract from the face, I guess, if that makes sense. So that's all I have to cover for today. We've learned how to drop body fat percentage long term, which will actually get the main goal for you. But we've also learned how to de our face in the short term for actually staying confident in the process. If you want me to do a more detailed general fat loss guide in terms of like gym and exercising and what type of workouts to do, I can definitely do that. Um, but this, I just thought I'd do a small fat loss video for the face because that's something that personally i've achieved and something that i was struggling with for a long time so hopefully this can help clear up any confusion for anyone who's also trying to get the same results so without further ado thank you for watching and stay curious